What to our family? Welcome back to the channel, man. It's your boy, Mr. Twy. Today, today, today. Hey, a skirt, skirt, man. Check this out. All right, guys, we've got this video today. It's called How Malaysia Did the Impossible. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, remember, this is your first time on the channel. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and join the Twy family. Also, before we get started, start it. Put a like on this video. Remember, if you got a video you want me to react to, get down in the comment section, post the link, and I will get to it, man. Let's go ahead and check this video out. What the Imagine your country is going through a huge political crisis. You have a new leader and several states have new governments. To add to this, not only is your country facing political crisis, but also economical, health, and defense. And then, the worst thing that could ever happen, happens. The coronavirus hits Malaysia. Malaysia was in some serious trouble. But don't you ever underestimate the power of Malaysians. Here are 15 ways that Malaysia did the impossible. Number 15, donations and volunteer organizations. So many people volunteered and so many organizations helped out. For example, Amaret provided healthcare workers with food, AC units, and raised over 3 million ringgit for medical supplies. Number 14, top doctor. Dr. Noor Hassam Abdullah has been ranked one of the top doctors in the entire world at fighting the coronavirus. And not only does he present accurate facts, he's able to do it in a way that gathers support and also keeps people calm as he does it. Number 13, the movement control order and the enhanced movement control order. These things are not easy to pull off and it took so many people and different organizations to work together to have them work. Number 12, indirect volunteers. There are so many people that helped out and volunteered and did so many different things like food delivery. Number 11, building temporary hospitals. Malaysia was able to build temporary hospitals very efficiently and quickly. For example, the largest agro park in Asia was able to be built into a hospital in three days. Number 10, the Tuvle Cluster. The Tuvle Cluster complied with any order from MOH and they never complained even though they had to wait long hours in the heat. Number 9, banks. Banks lent to the borrowers for six months. Number 8, universities. Universities allowed students to stay for free and provided them food as well. Number 7, stipends. Nearly 4 million homes received up to 1,600 ringgit. Number six, ignoring politics. Opposition leaders came together and forgot about politics for the good of Malaysia. Now that is really cool. Number five, protecting the most vulnerable. Malaysia did a great job in protecting those that were most vulnerable, homeless and foreign workers. They were put in public halls and provided a tent. Number four, Malaysians returning home. Malaysians returning home from overseas were provided a free hotel, free food, and COVID-19 testing during their two-week quarantine. Number three, respect for frontline workers. I have never seen so much respect and love for frontline workers. It was so beautiful to see all the support Malaysians gave to the frontline workers. Number two, fixing the PPE shortage for frontline workers. At the beginning of the crisis, there wasn't enough PPE for all the frontline workers. And so, Malaysians took it onto themselves. For example, a fashion designer realized she had a skill set that could be very valuable. And so she took the initiative to organize an entire team to make PPE. Prisoners make PPE, college students make PPE, even a Malaysian born with no arms didn't let that stop her from making PPE. And number one most important is teamwork. It didn't matter if you were a celebrity or an average person. It didn't matter your social status. It didn't matter your gender, your religion, your ethnicity. All Malaysians came together for the better of Malaysia. And that's how Malaysia was able to do the impossible, to go from a country that had three times more cases than any other country in Southeast Asia to now being one of the safest countries in the entire world.
lastly, I'd like to thank all the Malaysians that helped make this video possible. So many of you wrote to me, sent me videos and pictures, and specifically Pacific Baku, who's a motorcycle rider, let me take lots of his footage, along with Q Productions, who took beautiful drone shots. And you can find links to their channels in the description. So thank you to all of you who helped make this video possible. This is a story about a country in Southeast Asia that often doesn't get much attention. Malaysia. In March, Malaysia was failing. Newspapers published articles about how Malaysia was struggling against COVID-19. Malaysia had three times more cases than any country in Southeast Asia. The virus was in every state and federal territory. What makes the story even more sad is how the infection spread. Not from Malaysians partying or being badly behaved. It spread from a religious gathering. Malaysians being well behaved citizens had unknowingly spread COVID-19. But here is where the story gets interesting. Malaysia's government quickly made adjustments. Movement Control Order, or MCO. Roadblocks, closed events, closed schools, closed non-essential businesses. Malaysia would do MCO 2.0 or the Enhanced Movement Control Order. For anywhere where there are several cases, all businesses were closed. Roads all blocked. No one in or out. No one could leave their homes. But don't worry, food and medical care were provided. And Malaysia's case numbers, they started to drop. On April 14th, the Philippines passed Malaysia in COVID-19 cases. The next day, Indonesia. Two days later, Singapore. Singapore is a much smaller country with a population five times smaller. Singapore now has 15 times the case rate of Malaysia. Malaysia is an example that we can all overcome this. How a country that had so many cases did the right stuff to stop the spread. And almost no media is talking about it. Even myself, I am guilty of this. I made a video of the top 15 countries fighting COVID-19 and Malaysia wasn't included. But luckily, one of my Malaysian followers pointed out Malaysia's story. Malaysia's COVID-19 numbers are good, but when you realize at one point they were three times worse than any country in Southeast Asia, and now they're one of the best. It's an incredible story that needs to be told. So I ask you to help me let the world know Malaysia's story. What's up, family? Get down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the video. Also, if you got a video you want me to react to, get down in the comment section, post the link, and I will get to it. Wow, mashallah, bro. Um, I want to say thank you to the YouTube channel. I will put a link in um, the description to follow his channel. Um, yes, bro, we're going to help you get this word out. Um, right now, as we can see, um, people were, and um, you know, news and things were basically promoting that Malaysia was one of the top, you know, the top case countries in the world, basically. And um, for them now to be basically out of that and, and have a control of it, in a sense, and, and not have no more than cases rising, but actually cases dropping, that right there is something that you have to say, Alhamdulillah, man. You know what I'm saying? Mashallah. Because right now, that's, that's a blessing, and that's what a lot of other countries are trying to do right now so I feel like we need to follow in the footsteps of Malaysia because they have they have the mindset they have the tools they have the the steps that they're taking is working so I feel like everybody or every other country should follow in their steps because obviously what they're doing is working you know and shout out to Malaysia man you know just shout out to the whole basically the whole South of Asia shout out to y'all man because right now you guys do have the answer and you guys are right now the best in the world at fighting this and to me I want to say salute to you guys um, I hope that 
uh, the message spread more so people can follow in the steps of Malaysia because right now they are doing the best work that can be done at this moment. So thank you, Malaysia. Thank you. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and join the Watua family. Also, before you leave the channel, please put a like on this video. And guys, I will see you tomorrow. Inshallah. So please take care. Stay safe. Watua!